We have a special edition of Speechless today. There is a lot going down at the Capitol that you need to know about. And uh, before we get into the real topic of what's going on today, which will be about sodomy, legislation relating to sodomy, counseling of kids, data practices, privacy for uh, health insurance, uh, the bullying bill, they're all tied in together, those, those bills. Uh, and it's really promoting the gay, lesbian, transgender, bisexual society. Um, th that's, there's a full out attack on traditional families going on down at the legislature. They're all interconnected. But before we get into that, I want to show you uh, and remind you what's going on with the legislature and some in the legislature trying to take away your right to vote. And it's a critical issue. And the first issue regarding judicial retention elections is that's how they define it. Or uh, there's a group out there, Citizens for Impartial Justice, which has nothing to do with impartial justice. It's just clever names to make you think something's happening that's not happening. Um, this bill that takes away your right to vote is being pushed in the legislature, and I want you to know that one of the people pushing it on the House side is Peter Fisher uh, from the Maplewood, White Bear Lake uh, uh, area, and uh, Ann Willerney. Um, so, Matamidi also in this area. Uh, I want you to know about that because here's the big issue here. These are Democrats. A majority of Democrats that are pushing this bill, and it just belies their name. They're Democrats. They're for, supposed to be for elections, yet here they are trying to take away your right to vote. And they'll say, well, you're going to have an election, but what it is is a communist-style election where you only have one candidate. That's it. And it is uh, a tragedy, a travesty, that this is taking place and they're trying to deceive you, in my opinion. So Representative Peter Fisher uh, from House District 43A is one that is pushing this bill, and he is going against the Ramsey County uh, judges that want elections or have come out in favor of elections, and the, the Minnesota Judicial uh, Group, I forget their exact name, has been against the bill and is now neutral on it. We'll see where they come out this year. But most of the judges want to have elections. Uh, so what's, what's going on in Peter Fisher's mind, I don't know. Um, but I know he is confused based on some of the things he says and also belonging to the Democrat Party, which goes against the Democrat Party's ideology of having elections. Okay, that's what part of the word Democrat means. So there's Fisher uh, going off the deep end. And if you want to find out the people who really have a totalitarian, totalitarian mindset, not a democracy or republic or freedom issue, you find the people that are signed on to this bill, uh, House File 1083, and you're going to find that out. Okay, um, now this subject matter is going to be uh, graphic. Uh, it's going to be intense. What I'm going to do is show you a video about sodomy uh, and about health-related issues, the whole concept of the society more leaning towards sodomy, or opening up soci society that sodomy is accepted. This video will talk to you about sodomy and the implications of it. And we'll also show you what is taking place in our public schools to promote sodomy. And this is a public health issue that's going on and I wanna educate you on that. But the biggest piece of education here is how all these bills interrelate. They look separate, but they're not. So the first bill, and this video will talk a lot about it, but it's, it's the bullying bill. House file 826, and if I look who signed on to it, it is uh, Democrats all the way around. And 
this this bill, this bullying bill, really isn't about bullying. It doesn't solve the problem. Matter of fact, the bullying bill, HF, House File 826 and Senate File 783, does not protect kids from bullying. What it actually does, in my opinion, it creates avenues for children to be bullies. And the con consequences of these children being bullies and reporting people who they think are bullies, whether they're bullies or not, um, ends up making the children bullies, and these children have no recourse. Here, here's a real big problem with this, Bill, is that if your child is accused of bullying, parents don't get to know about it. There's no provision in there that there's any due process rights, and the parent of the child does not know about it. And that's from kindergarten all the way through high school. This is sick, and that's why I promote the Parental Rights Constitutional Amendment that puts it in our Constitution that parents have the fundamental right to raise their children in the upbringing and, and uh, education of their choice. But in this bullying bill, the b definition of bullying is so broad that it leaves it to anybody. I'm offended by what you say. or uh, So it's any offense. And whether it's an, uh, an opinion or uh, an expression of belief. And we all have them, and as kids, we're forming them. And as children, they're forming them, and they're trying to express them. And that give and take goes on. And they need to learn this process of give and take. And what's happening is really a top-down, state-mandated, here's what you can say and here's what you can't say. And, and the offense can be real or imagined. And that happens uh, in all circles of life. And I was talking to a person the other day that said, hey, I, I was bullied. Well, and I said, well, who wasn't? Who hasn't been? Because the people that have been bullied also bully. Who doesn't get bullied? The issue is how you deal with it. And leaving the parents out of the picture and, and over this overbroad definition of bullying is going to destroy a lot of lives. And uh, so this is a bad thing, uh, but I want you to know this is just a piece of the puzzle. This is all about sodomy and sexual orientation. And they're putting these separate bills together, and House File 826 is one of them. And Senator Weger has signed on to this bill. He needs to get his name off and not vote for it. This is a bad bill all the way around and has taken away parental rights, which when I've approached him to signing on to the Parental Rights Constitutional Amendment and, and putting that issue out there, he hasn't done it. So in my opinion, Senator Wigger does not care one bit about your parental rights. It's about what the state is the parent, and the state is going to determine how you raise your kids. Okay, so that's one bill. Then, um, House File 1906, which is also signed uh, on by a number of Democrats, and Senate File 1727, this bill takes away the right of minors to receive counseling for unwanted same-sex attractions, uh, even if those attractions result from sexual abuse or molestation from a sexual predator. So again, here it's taking away parental rights. You see the bullying bill taking away parental rights? You see this bill taking away parental rights? It's the same concept here where the state has become the parent, and this is the encrosion. It takes away par rights of parents to choose a licensed medical health provider that aligns with their family's religious and spiritual values on the issues of homosexuality. So what happens to the freedom of religion? and the freedom to exercise the religion. You don't have it anymore. It goes away. Okay, um, it's government intrusion into our families. Uh, children who are molested and develop same-sex attractions, such as uh, as a result of sexual abuse, will be denied access to highly qualified counselors. Same-sex attracted persons are more likely to be victims of sexual abuse than heterosexuals. It's one of the 
uh, perversions that come out of sexual abuse is the same sex type of attraction that takes place in it. And it won't be dealt with and parents won't be able to deal with it because it will be illegal to counsel uh, your own children against that type of behavior. Uh, so uh, then the last bill that's coming into play here is called the, the Baby DNA Bill. House file 2526 and Senate file 2047. And this is being in the House, it's being pushed by Horton, Murphy, Huntley, Liebling, and Mariani in the Senate by Marty, Hayden, and Lowry. Here's the deal with this bill. You as a parent have no right over your child's DNA. Once that, once the hospital gets your DNA, and I encourage every parent to do whatever tests necessary to find out about their health of their children, whether it's DNA screening or newborn screening, uh, which this bill addresses. But after that, the state wants it, and you have no say in that. That's what this bill is doing, is taking away your say, and the state wants that and is going to go in and use that information and uh, sell it for research, uh, and it can be used against you in the future regarding health, health insurance, and you have no say. And this has already happened, where they have sold your data, companies and people who sold the data have made millions, hundreds of millions of dollars, but you get nothing, and it's your property. It's your property rights, and that's a big battle going on here. So those three bills are all combined to take away parental rights and to promote in the process uh, uh, sodomy, the homosexual, gay, lesbian, bisexual lifestyle. And the video we're going to see now will talk about this, and it's, it's, it's graphics in some regards, but it's going to show you what's going to be taught to your children, what is being taught in number schools in Minnesota, and uh, the health effects that is taking place. Uh, so this is not something you want to have your children watch, but uh, but believe me, it's already in the public schools. They're getting it, you know, at age 10, they're getting it. And of course, the emphasis is also to get it to a, a lower age and as soon as possible so we get this gender confusion. So remember, this is graphic adult information that your children are getting taught in school. Uh, I want you to watch it. So uh, beware, be learned, know what's going on, and then speak up. All right, let's roll the video. This program is about sodomy, health, money, and House File HF 826, documenting the assault against our children, parents, and citizens. You can find out more information by going to pmaforum.org. We highly recommend the parental advisory because of the explicit content and nature of what is going to be discussed. To give some background information, I would like to show you the Locke model form of a constitutional republic. The Locke model illustrates the constitutional republic originally set by our founding fathers for America. It is based upon God-given inalienable rights which have the most say and direction to people's lives and conduct. These inalienable rights are given to individuals which have the biggest level of power and say in their lives and collectively in government, government by the people. It's individual citizens that create city government. The next level of a lesser form of government power and control is called the county government once again created collectively by individuals. A lesser and even more limited form of government created above county government is state government. It is the individual states by the say and power of its citizens that has created the federal government. The federal government has the least and most limited amount of control and say to the individuals. It is under a contract that this least form of government is limited and serves to the God-given inalienable rights of individuals. This contract is called the Constitution of the United States, under which we call its citizens Americans. Not black Americans, white Americans, German Americans, Swedish Americans, or by any other name. This is America with American citizens, not American people groups. It maintains its sovereignty and distinction from other countries and world powers. 
The U.S. Supreme Court used international sources to guide its decisions in recent domestic cases, such as Lawrence v. Texas, which overturned state sodomy laws, as it is done in every state, including Minnesota. In Lawrence v. Texas, the court used international law to interpret the U.S. Constitution, discovering a new constitutional right to engage in homosexual conduct. Lawrence was not the first time the court had used international law to interpret our Constitution. So it is the United Nations that is intent on stealing our nation's sovereignty and overturning state laws from you. State statutes define sodomy as meaning carnally knowing any person by the anus or with or by the mouth or the digestive system. It is a voluntary act enlisted with other sex crimes. Because of the U.S. Supreme Court, as directed by the U.N. decision previously discussed, the penalty for sodomy becomes unenforceable even though it is still state law. However, some individuals are aware of the destruction of sodomy to the family, community, and the financial health of the state and are placing pressure on state legislators to protect the public and not this special interest group's agenda. How about the citizens of Minnesota? Are you willing to do your responsibility too? The following are some reasons why you should be concerned and react. The following facts are the anatomical differences between the digestive system and the female reproductive system. Please note the references. They are peer-reviewed prior to publication. The rectum, digestive system oral or anal, consists of a highly absorbent single-layered wall of columnar epithelial cells. It is far more fragile than the multi-layered vaginal wall made up of squamous cells and thus a more flexible and protected organ. Ongoing anal intercourse often leads to the breakdown of normal rectal functions due to the trauma of the anal sphincter muscle. Thus, basic anatomical facts demonstrate that the lower intestinal tract was never intended to be used as a sex organ. But if body design isn't a sufficient argument against anal and oral intercourse, the tragic reality of AIDS ought to be conclusive. Its physical structure also makes the rectum highly susceptible to the infiltration of disease. Studies have also indicated that the body's natural immune system is broken down by repeated exposure to sperm during anal and oral intercourse. The reason rests again in the difference between anal and vaginal membranes. Now get this, sperm can penetrate the former but not the latter. In other words, vaginal membranes a barrier and the digestive membrane is absorbent. While it is true that all of the diseases discussed above can be found among heterosexuals, statistics support the conclusion that homosexual, precisely because of their sexual behavior, are significantly more susceptible to infection, sickness, and death. Remember, these are doctor peer-reviewed publications of findings of fact. Here's an illustration of the facts we just read. The egg in the female is waiting to be fertilized by the sperm from the male. The sperm has three main parts. The front has an enzyme for egg penetration, a compartment containing DNA chromosomes, and a tail for propulsion. Together, the egg and sperm have the DNA necessary for conception. The egg has a strong membrane protecting its contents. The sperm uses the enzyme in the front of it to burn through the egg membrane. When the sperm gets through the membrane into the egg, Fertilization takes place and the egg puts out a toxic hormone stopping other sperm from entering in. This process is called conception. In the female reproductive system, the squamous or cubular shaped cells are designed to stretch during sex and childbirth. They are multi-layered as you can see in the side view and staggered in the multiple layers as you can see in the top view and act as a barrier so sperm cannot get into the bloodstream. The vaginal wall is a barrier to contain the sperm against getting into the bloodstream. This is how the female sex organ is designed to work, to protect her from the sperm entering into the blood. In the digestive system, whether oral or anal, the single layer of columnar shaped cells are designed to absorb the good or bad foods, medicines, and things we put in it. The cells are loose with gaps between them, as you can see in the top view, and move down and up to promote and allow passage into the bloodstream. When sperm enters a digestive system, it is quickly absorbed into the blood. It is the enzyme in the sperm that causes the immune system to fail. AIDS stands for Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome. 
Acquired is defined in the dictionary as to gain for oneself through one's actions or efforts. Syndrome is defined as a distinctive or characteristic pattern of behavior. Sodomy is a voluntary act to destroy the immune system that protects us from disease, various cancers, and other health issues. On Planned Parenthood website, it states that taking semen into the digestive system is not unhealthy. They say there's nothing unhealthy about swallowing semen. This is an outright lie because sperm and the HIV virus are in the semen. It will deceive the children that become adults to believe that they will probably not get sick and or cause death from sodomizing themselves. The organizations protect themselves with deception and ignorant or willingly ignorant lawmakers and law, relying on the children's innocence and public's lust and program desire to engage in alternate sexual behavior and sodomy. 1988 was the last year that Center for Disease Control published AIDS to death cases. As we will see, the trend that over half of the cases of AIDS end in death. In this chart, of the 60,852 cases of AIDS, 34,088 died from it. In the AIDS community, according to a recent study of 5,246 obituaries in 16 homosexual newspapers from coast to coast, the average age of men dying from AIDS is 39. The average age of homosexuals dying from all other causes is even more revealing, 41. Only 1% die of old age. Less than 3% of all homosexuals surveyed are over the age of 55. People that regularly engage in sodomy live less than half their age. People who are casual with sodomy are susceptible to a breakdown of their immune system, causing various sicknesses and cancers. Once again, treating the symptoms and not the triggers to the syndrome. And it gets worse. As the immune system is destroyed, viruses can set in, commonly called HIV. Because of the time involved and the slow progression of symptoms, most people do not even know they are dying and spreading their deadly disease to the healthy population. An estimated 34 million people globally have been diagnosed with HIV, according to the World Health Organization. Since the epidemic began more than 30 years ago, the infection has claimed more than 33 million lives, the CDC estimates. More than 1.1 million people in the U.S. are living with the infection, but nearly one in six is unaware they are infected. This means that an estimated 916,000 people in the United States unknowingly have and are actively spreading HIV's pain, suffering, and death at your expense and risk. This chart illustrates that close to 60% of the professing gay men do not use a condom. Note the rate is rising. The chart does not include bisexual men. The medical care for these diseases are paid for ultimately by you, the taxpayer. AIDS HIV are at your door. Here is a map of major infected HIV AIDS people concentrations. Do you really want to spread it further in Minnesota? To stop it is your responsibility right now. If the promoters of the homosexual lifestyle could find any possible shred of evidence of gay behavior being justified as anything but a perversion of sexual lust, they would have paraded it with great fanfare and force unhindered law. On April 14, 2003, the International Human Genome Consortium announced the successful completion of the Human Genome Project. Educational institutions such as Baylor University, the Max Planck Institute, the Sanger Institute, Washington University in St. Louis, and others have spent countless hours and millions of research dollars analyzing these unique chromosomes. As the data began to pour in, they allowed scientists to construct gene maps using actual sequences from the Human Genome Project. And yet, neither the map for the X nor the Y chromosome contains any gay gene. Not even the Sanger Institute could throw enough money and experts at it to find anything. Remember, these are peer-reviewed publications. The human gene has been mapped hundreds of times in several people groups. No gay gene anywhere. Right now, all they have to justify sodomy is deception. There are numerous publications confirming the fact that there is no medical justification for the normal desire to sodomize someone. It is a voluntary act and it is a choice. The person's thinking will voluntarily be reprogrammed to a deviant behavior as they submit to the hormone dopamine addiction. 
People really think they are expressing themselves when in reality the government has modified their behavior. Some more than others, but it's the same assault on the individual's behavior modification. Many other diseases are coming to the sodomite and is spreading to the unsuspecting healthy public at large. Staph typically breaks out in a cut or opening. However, these infections are originating in unbroken skin and are attacking uncommon places including the butt, penis, scrotum, legs, hands, and face. The concern, according to Dr. Peter Ruin, an infectious disease specialist in Los Angeles, is that the disease could spread to the community at large. Large, painful skin infections started turning up early last fall among Los Angeles gay men, then appeared with increasing frequency. Because they still know so little about the extent of the outbreak, they cannot predict how many people it may eventually affect. The infection, which causes boils, deep abscesses, and widespread surrounding inflammation, has proved impervious to common antibiotics. But the infections in LA gay men the majority with well-controlled HIV AIDS, but many others in good health, took hold in unbroken skin. Federal figures show the percentage of staph specimens resistant to antibiotics increased from 2% in 1974 to 50% in 1997. The LA investigation has found the local strain resistant to current medicines. That limits the drug arsenal to less effective medicines, which is administered intravenously. Some doctors use the new antibiotic Zyvox, but with a single course costing $1,500, required for the rest of life, they often have trouble persuading insurers to pay for it. The sodomite lifestyle is a voluntarily slow, complicated suicide. This is a public health issue. It is avoidable, expensive, and you are paying for it, financially and with our children's lives. After comparing notes with several colleagues also seeing unusual skin infections in gay patients, Ruin said, we felt we were looking at some form of outbreak. Ruin then notified county health officials. That's when the Federal Health Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reported the deaths of four children in Minnesota and North Dakota whose infections didn't respond to treatment. Similar outbreaks, sometimes with fatalities, have been recorded among intravenous drug abusers, athletes, prisoners, Native Americans, and Eskimos whose close living conditions make them likely to share personal items such as towels. If people are telling you that gays cannot spread their diseases to you, better look at the real facts again that are not tainted with the gay agenda. It's an evolving story, said Ruin, who in September began noticing an increased number of the aggressive staph infections in his gay patients. The aggressiveness of this took us aback. Not even the medical community for gays, bi's, or straights can get this under control because it is voluntarily acquired and a physical system that cannot be controlled. Just abstain the behavior. What has been indoctrinated to the students that are now parents and legislators by the Minnesota Department of Education? The Minnesota Department of Education published its own program to direct teachers for developing a school support system for gay, lesbian, and bisexual youth. It was made under the guise and play on words to prevention and risk reduction. Use accurate language and information in instruction. How can the teacher do that when they are directed to deceive? They must comprise the facts to achieve an alternate behavior. In other words, lie to you. Modify materials as needed. Example, use sexual orientation rather than sexual preference as the latter connotes being gay, lesbian, or bisexual is preferred, or say unsubstantiated language like, it is a choice, it is not. These suggestions and images they are referring to are triggers for the hormone dopamine in children, like pornography in adults. The actual images have since been added in the common core curriculum, as we will see. These are examples that are manipulated to deceive children. Deception presented and taught as fact. We will talk more about sexual orientation later, but you have learned that there is no justification for telling teachers to tell students that sodomy is not a choice, and there has never been justification for it. The new proposed Common Core Standards curriculums are made to accomplish these deceptive end goals.
The instruction manual tells teachers to say that sexual activity and sexual intercourse includes vaginal and anal intercourse and oral sex. Sexual intercourse has never included sodomy. Sodomy is promoted as being a common practice by opposite and same gender couples. In current law, sexual orientation has never referred to the sexual preference of a person. Note the several emphasis on sexual orientation that it is not a choice. That will be important later. The promotion of sodomy in the classroom is getting more and more intense and deceptive, as we will see. The teacher is instructed to create a safe environment for the children. The definition of safe, one, secure from danger, harm, or evil, and two, free from danger or injury, unhurt. How is teaching sodomy as involuntary and normal sexual behavior safe for children? It is not. Teachers are to make an inclusive environment, assess what messages are present in the classroom environment, pictures, words, images, sayings. Are they inclusive of same gender relationships or a range of family constellations? Display posters such as, unfortunately, history has set the record a little too straight, and what can you do? Your best friend has just told you I'm gay. Appendix C is how to order the posters. The taxpayer-funded Minneapolis Health Department and Minnesota AIDS Project also are teaching children how to perform sodomy and giving a false pretense that using a dental dam can protect the user from getting a disease. How to minimize interruption during sex. How to use the dental dam. Using what a teenager likes best, food, to experiment with a dental dam. A trigger for hormones rewiring the brain. There's your protection. The idea of being safe with a cut-up condom. The sperm enzyme may not enter the digestive system while performing oral sex with a condom, but it is a lie that oral sex with a dental dam can prevent HIV and other sexually transmitted diseases. These instructions were distributed in public schools with your money. Just like a balloon has small holes that leak air through them over a short time, condoms have small holes too. It is the nature and physics of the material being used. Looking at the size of these diameters of holes, a condom hole may stop sperm, remember rubber stretches, but a virus like HIV can pass through with ease because the virus is 50 times smaller than the condom holes. But these facts are not a part of the instruction from the teachers. The textbooks that are in pilot schools for the common core curriculums imply that a latex or polyurethane condom will stop a virus from passing through them. It is important to use a latex or polyurethane condom, not lambskin. Viruses that are transmitted by sexual conduct, such as HIV and hepatitis B and A, can seep through tiny pores in the lambskin and cause a person to become infected. More about this textbook later. We know that AIDS attacks and kills the brain too. Is this safe, normal, and healthy for children? Of course it isn't. What are the consequences for teaching sodomy as normal behavior to children? A life of pain, suffering, and death at your expense. AIDS HIV does not start out being obvious. This is a long-term sickness with a lot of pain and expense before death. Over time, the symptoms may start by feeling a little off in how you feel. Maybe some over-the-counter drugs may ease the symptoms and cover them, making you temporarily feel better. But things don't get better. The disease and its symptoms just keep getting worse, more obvious, more painful, and more expensive. Over time, dealing with the disease, a 25-year-old can start looking like a 70-year-old or other obvious conditions. As it progresses, the disease can attack the body in many different debilitating ways, internally, externally, or both. A little rash can turn into a full-blown infection, one that can be spread by blood-borne pathogens. Blood-borne pathogens are diseases in anything made with the use of blood, i.e. saliva, tears, sweat, etc. This is why barriers are used by EMTs, nurses, doctors, police, etc. when coming in contact with a person. Don't think HIV can be spread except by contact during sex? Try telling an EMT, nurse, or doctor not to put on barriers before working on a patient or working in the lab. This is a public health issue. 
Is teaching sodomy under the protection of law and bullying healthy, normal, and safe for children and the public? No, it is not. And if someone tells you differently, they are lying to you and may be getting paid to do so. This is a public health issue. The construction of law for sexual orientation has these intents. Nothing in this chapter shall be construed to mean the state of Minnesota condones homosexuality or bisexuality or any equivalent lifestyle, authorize or permit the promotion of homosexuality or bisexuality in education institutions, authorize the recognition of or the right of marriage between persons of the same sex. The gay lifestyle and the practice of sodomy by anyone is not a part of sexual orientation at all. So the sodomites cry, that's not fair, and pay the teachers to promote and teach tolerance and acceptance of sodomy behavior. The children's curriculum is focused on acceptance of homosexuality, affirmative action towards promoting the gay agenda, violence prevention, acceptance of gays, more about House File 826 bullying bill later, Anti-military themes are a topic for other documentaries. Under the section on homosexuality, they have the definition of homophobia, a fear and hatred of gay men and lesbians backed up by institutional policies and power that discriminate against them. In other words, the church and other religions and doctrines teaching against sodomy. The gay agenda only recognizes the religion of humanism or atheism. The Common Core curriculum is particularly against the church. The current curriculums are teaching that not accepting sodomy as a healthy or right behavior to the public is a psychological, physical attack, fear and hatred on professing gays. In law, a crime is a crime, whether you are a professing gay or straight person. Laws are to protect God-given individual rights, not special interest group agendas that are assaulting the public. House File 826, which has already passed the House and is expected to pass in the Senate the 2014 session with little resistance from the public, is changing the intent and lawful definition of sexual orientation and the purpose of bullying law. Statutory and policy reform should focus on, among other provisions, the following. In other words, if you feel like you should be a boy or a girl, teachers in the school would have to allow and may promote students to use opposite gender locker rooms and bathrooms, etc. in schools. A. Include gender identity or expression. In Statute 127A.42, in other words, someone cannot approach, counsel, remove, or tell a boy to leave the girl's locker room or a girl to leave the boy's bathroom or any other cross-gender restriction. B. Include gender identity or expression. In Rule 3535.2300, changing the law in multiple locations. C. The word discriminate includes sexual harassment. In the Minnesota Human Rights Act, a school cannot approach, counsel, remove, or discourage homosexual behavior. D. Advise Minnesota school districts and administrators. In other words, create another unfunded mandate advisory board to rule over the school districts in the Equal Access Act and force the school districts to pay for the service to police their school policies and implementation. Teachers, administrators, and anyone employed by the public school systems could not challenge, counsel, or remove a student expressing themselves as a cross-gender person. It is the parents that could be held accountable if the student feels bullied. Gay marriage or sexual orientation is not about gays, bi's, heterosexuals, marriage, right, wrong, etc. That is just a diversion. It is deceitful and in most cases an outright lie. It is about legalizing sodomy, causing avoidable pain, suffering and death, and financial ruin while making the elite, doctors, lawyers, pharmaceutical companies rich. Open your eyes to the train wreck this country is headed for as a history has proved over and over. A virus cannot be killed because it is not alive, and it doesn't matter who you are or what or who you like or love or anything else. It is a public health assault by the elite to the unsuspecting public to reprogram the public under the Federal Health Care Act, commonly known as Obamacare. If a human chooses to practice sodomy and acquire the immune deficiency over time, 
AIDS in their body, there is no medicine that can kill the virus, HIV, that will eventually take over the person. The only thing medicine can do is prolong the expensive suffering, pain, and death. Medicine can't even cure the common cold virus in a healthy person. The only variable is how strong the individual's initial immune system is when the behavior of sodomy begins. Aren't we as individuals and our lawmakers supposed to protect the public? One in four new cases of HIV is occurring in our youth, the posterity and future of our country. That's 1,000 youth per month. Most don't even know they are spreading the diseases. Abraham Lincoln said, the philosophy of the schoolroom in one generation will become the philosophy of government in the next. The philosophies in the classroom today are teaching our children to rely on government. It's our responsibility to protect the schoolroom, ourselves, and the public from assaults foreign and domestic. The practice of sodomy is spreading death. Blame shifting it to someone else after the child dies is too late. Now is the time to act. Or do we give our precious gifts of children, freedom, and responsibility to the elite and world powers? The common core standards are corrupt in every subject. It's time to stop thinking our children are an autopilot education in school and parents can't have a say in what their children learn. Even a few years ago, how many parents thought sodomy would be legalized and mandated to be taught it is safe, normal sexual behavior? However horrible you may think things are, the situation is much, much worse. In the name of health, children are systematically being reprogrammed and stolen from you to serve government, the rich, and elite. Only you can stop this assault. The children and your freedom are at stake. Reprogramming the mind is a serious threat. Even you may need to make a decision to stop the assault on yourself. Do not allow the public health assault and legalization of sodomy in Minnesota or the education of it being an acceptable lifestyle to our children. This is a public health issue. Sodomy is an unnatural use of the body. Sodomy is unhealthy and can kill, destroy the immune system, and those who practice it have an incredibly high risk to diseases, infection, and suffer in pain and untimely death. A virus is not alive and cannot be killed. Only a healthy immune system can suppress it. This is why antibiotics don't work. A virus is not alive. Antibiotics can relieve HIV symptoms while the immune system continues to fail. The disease sodomy produces can be spread to the unsuspecting society at large. Sodomy is too large of a financial burden on Minnesota and society to maintain viability. If Minnesota legalizes the gay agenda and lifestyle, it is equal with legalizing sodomy, and the taxpayers are going to pay for it. It will shift money for public necessities and services to paying the elite under the guise of health care. House File 826 is called a Safe and Supportive Schools Bill or Anti-Bullying Bill. It is a state-mandated approach claiming to help solve bullying in our public schools. It is an untested experiment on her children. It will cost public schools over $20 million per year to implement, and the state is providing zero funding for local school districts. This will be another unfunded mandate that will take away funding from academic programs. This is the least of the problems with the bill, as you will soon see. I would like to re reiterate that this is pending legislation at the state capitol. House File 826 is administered by an unelected 24-member school climate council who decides for all Minnesota schools what is and is not bullying and the procedures and consequences for students accused of bullying. This approach seriously damages local control and parent involvement in dealing with bullying incidences. Illinois and other states have rejected bills like House File 826, but here in Minnesota, our DFL-controlled legislature and governor want to pass it. Minnesota public schools are already required by state statute to develop policies and implement procedures to deal with intimidation and bullying, and the re these results show they are very effective in preventing and reducing bullying at local school district levels. Therefore, House File 826 and its supporters are trying to address a manufactured crisis. 
House File 826 has a vague definition regarding bullying. It includes words like objectively offensive, emotional distress, actual or perceived, asserted or alleged, in regard to defining bullying. Keep in mind this is to be implemented by an unelected 24-member state-mandated school climate council. Does this sound like an effective proven strategy to solve bullying incidents or more like an ineffective experiment mandated on our children with a political agenda? House File 826 is legislation that is designed to implement the Governor's Safe and Supportive Schools Task Force report completed in August 2012. This report is designed to instill in school children state-mandated values, attitudes, and behaviors, in addition to having students understand the nature of human sexuality. Let's see what the Governor's Task Force means by connecting bullying to human sexuality. The following is an example of curriculum currently available to students in 12 metro school districts, including elementary, middle, and senior high school students. The title is, It's Perfectly Normal. Keep in mind, this is for use with children as young as 10 years old in our public schools. Parental Advisory. The following pictures are from the curriculum, It's Perfectly Normal. They are very sexually explicit. Please remove children from viewing at this time. We know this material is disgusting. However, we believe it is necessary for citizens and parents to understand the pending danger House File 826 can and eventually will mandate on public schools. If you show a child 0 to 18 years old the following sexually explicit common core curriculum, it's perfectly normal, or they find it outside the walls of public schools, you or the adult could be charged with obscenity crimes under state statutes. However, our public schools are exempt from state obscenity laws and therefore free to expose our children to these or any unhealthy sexual behaviors, images, resources, and perversions they choose. Note, there are many good and excellent educators and administrators in our public schools who would not show this type of curriculum to students. However, if House File 826 passes and is signed into law by the governor, they will be mandated to use and implement this type of curriculum on children as young as 10 years old. This is why we have chosen to blank out areas of scanned pictures of the actual curriculum, it's perfectly normal, that is to be shown and taught to children in Minnesota public schools. Again, an adult outside the protection of the public school, unlike a teacher, could be charged with state obscenity laws. Due to state statutes, we have censored some of what is being shown in Minnesota public schools. Are these the comic stories you grew up with? Are they appropriate for elementary students? In Chapter 5 on page 16 and 17, children are taught that ancient Greeks thought that love between two men was the highest form of love. On page 57 it states, there are other ways people make love and have sex. When a person puts his or her mouth on a female's vulva or on a male's penis, this is called oral sex or oral intercourse. When a male's penis goes inside another person's anus, this is called anal sex or anal intercourse. Some people think that when people have oral sex or anal sex, they are not having sex. Keep in mind the curriculum censors the medical, biological, and genetic facts of such unhealthy and perverted behaviors and instead indoctrinates children as young as 10 years old with lies and deceit. We believe that the majority of taxpayers and parents do not believe that this type of curriculum is developmentally appropriate for children as young as 10 years old. Yet if HF 826 becomes law, this type of curriculum could be mandated into every public school in Minnesota. The following is where It's Perfectly Normal has been made available for students in 12 Minnesota metro school districts, including elementary, middle, and senior high school students.
The consequences of showing young children sexually explicit and obscene material can be worse than what you think. Viewing obscene material releases a chemical called dopamine in the brain. This creates a related problem, what experts call tolerance. In other words, the need for more of a given stimulant, harder and weirder porn, for the same amount of dopamine. In the end, the result is what Deutsch politely calls potency problems. The study Use of Pornography in the Criminal and Developmental Histories of Sexual Offenders examined the exposure to and the usage of pornography in the histories of rapists and child molesters. The study found that both groups reported exposure to pornography and were significantly more likely to use pornographic materials before and during their offenses. House File 826 also calls for community organizations to help in the implementation of bullying instruction. One of the community organizations that have sponsored House File 826 and are likely to help the implementation of it in our public schools is GLSEN, the Gay Lesbian Straight Educational Network here in Minnesota. You can find out more about this organization by visiting their website and see why parents have concerns about their involvement in bullying instructions. Also, it should come as no surprise that Planned Parenthood has endorsed the curriculum, It's Perfectly Normal, and its explicit sexual message to our children. Remember, Planned Parenthood makes millions of dollars and justifies its existence when young children act irresponsibly sexually at a younger and younger age. Tell Governor Dayton and the legislators no to House File 826 and Senate File 3 or any other type of similar bill. Finally, we as responsible citizens need to act compassionately to those who are trapped and addicted to unhealthy sexual behaviors that are destroying young people's and adults' lives. Let us have a revival in our culture and return to moral absolutes where we express our human sexuality within the bonds of traditional marriage for the sake of our children. God bless you and may God continue to bless America. We want to thank you for watching this documentary and don't forget to tell your legislators to say no to House File 826. If your legislator agrees to say no, also tell him or her to say something during session to convince other legislators to vote no. We encourage viewers to read articles, letters, tell your neighbors, friends, and social media. Give them a copy of this documentary or any other way to let people know about the assault on our children. Thank you for acting to promote the innocence of Minnesota's children. Are you shocked? Are you amazed? Are you distraught? This should wake you up. There's something terrible happening in Minnesota with our laws. And again, I'm going to remind you of the numbers of these uh, bills. The bullying bill, HF, House File 826, Senate File 783. Call your legislature, tell them to take their names off the bill and not to vote for this. Also, House File 1906, Senate File 1727, take away a right to minor, mi minorities to receive counseling in relationship to uh, sexual identities and sexual abuse. And again, all these bills take away parental rights over the children. And then the baby DNA or newborn screening bill, House File 2526 and Senate File 2047. Um, again, takes away parental rights, takes away your control over your own DNA. And uh, this is a tragedy all the way around. Folks, you need to call in and do what's right. And just remember, if you don't stand up for other people's liberties, who's going to stand up for yours? And good men don't do nothing. Get out there, do something, and stop this abuse. God bless. Have a great week. The days go by like the forest sets on fire in the wind takes the kite as the firefly brings the light.